Hi everyone, welcome to MDC in the Haitian community. My name is James Pierre. Our special guest today is Nelda Jean, yes. Nelda Jean, as we say it in Hi. Creole. You are true Haitian American. I just want to yes. make sure that we say that straight. Haitian American, Nelda Jean. Absolutely. <laughs> and you look wonderful, oh, beautiful. Thank you. You know, as a Haitian American, I am so proud of you, you know, <laughs> for your you. accomplishment. And I'm very honored to have you on the show uh, Thank you for today. Me. And Thank uh, you. our audience will learn more from you. Uh, but your main core is as radio uh, uh, producer, that you're producing several That's shows great. in the Haitian community. You're empowering the community, especially women, to, uh, you know, to have a voice in the uh, Haitian community. But first, I need to know more about your childhood. You were born in Haiti and came here Haiti. very little. Yes, I was born in Ocap, came here when I was eight years old. Grew up in Miami in the little, little Haiti area, to be exact. Okay. And I later moved to Plantation, which is up in Fort Lauderdale. Wow. But yeah, I was born in Cap Haitian, Haiti. Tell me a bit about Cap Haitian, uh, just in <laughs> case for our, our viewers that wanted to know. I know it's from north side of Haiti. It is the north yeah. side of Haiti. But like I said, I've been here since I was eight years old. Uh -huh. So I only know a little bit about Cap Haitian, but it is in the north side of Haiti. Have you been to Haiti after that? I have gone back to Haiti. I've gone to Jacques Mel. I've gone to Port-au-Prince. I only went back to Haiti to Ocap one time in the Pleasant. Go, there's an area called Pleasance. Uh -huh. So when I went back to Haiti, I did, I, I did a lot of touring in the Port-au-Prince area. But as far as the northern part of Haiti is concerned, like the Ocap area, there's an area called Pleasance. I went there and I stayed there for like an hour or two, so I didn't get to spend a lot of time in my hometown. So for our viewers, obviously uh, I said it several times, they know that I'm Haitian. Instead of me <laughs> telling them about Haiti, what did you tell me about your experience in Haiti? How is Haiti? When I went back to Haiti, it was about eight years ago. It was very surprising to me based on my experience from being in Haiti when I was a child. I mean, I came here when I was eight, so I still have memories of my time in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And when I went back a few years back, the changes that I saw in Haiti, it was a little bit disappointing to me because I grew up finding Haiti to be a very beautiful country. Mm -hmm. um, the people there were very humble, very friendly, very kind. And it was a place you can actually go to and leave your doors open and be, just be happy and be merry, if you want to mm -hmm. say it that way. But um, when I went back a few years ago, I didn't really get that feeling of, of humbleness and, and happy and merry. It was, the, it was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Not. I don't want to say sad, but I didn't get that happy feeling so that I grew up with in a, way a lot, from your childhood. tremendously. Uh -huh. I didn't feel happy like the childhood I remember from heaven there. I didn't get that when I went mm. back a few years ago. Cool. Uh, now you, you moved to the uh, United States in Miami, later mm. Haiti. Tell me about your, 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 your education experience. So obviously, you, you, did you go to a Haitian school or did you go to Haitian American school? I How did. Um, I went to elementary school here in Miami, Alapata Elementary School. I went to Robert E. Lee. I'm a general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert E. Lee Middle School. And then I went to Jackson Senior High which ah. is predominantly Spanish, Latin American. Uh, so I ended up growing up around the Latin American as opposed to the Haitian community. If I would have went to, let's say, Edison, which was more mm -hmm. predominantly Haitian based, I didn't go to Edison. So I went to a more Latin American um, area school. How do you cope with that? I mean, it's, it's a different culture. Uh, so how, how, you, how, you, how you adapt <laughs> to, to the system? Very difficult. You know, being that my name is Nelda, uh -huh. in Spanish there is a word that is not a nice word that uh -huh. starts with an M. Uh -huh. So Nelda was changed to, to M. The <laughs> okay. uh -huh. So it was very interesting. I encountered a lot of difficulty, but you know, in life you're going to find that. It's just yes. a matter of how you handle it and where your focus is and go from there. Yeah, but what was your, your, your strength? Who, uh, I can say, who was your inspiration to keep going in school? When I was in school, I did a lot of track and field. I went track and field a lot, long distance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I put a lot of my focus just uh, focusing on sports. That's why I've always loved Ed Spanel that was here earlier. Uh -huh. And I grew up listening to him on the radio, him, Ed Lozama, and several other people. And because of him being in sports, and I follow sports a lot, and I myself, I'm a sports person. I ran and I did volleyball, I did softball, but my biggest strength, my most strength was in um, track and field long distance. Cool. And, and obviously how your, your parents reacted to that, because I know that, you 
you know, sports in Haiti is more like soccer. So when you're talking about volleyball and all of that, I'm pretty sure they had some Actually, something to say about it. To be honest with you, it was hard because, you know, with track and field or with any sports that you play in school, my parents, my mom particularly, she did not like the idea of me staying after school. Uh -huh. So whenever I needed to take something home for her signature to approve for me to stay out of school, uh, or when we have to go across, you know, to other states mm -hmm. and other country, um, other counties to, um, to participate, participate in tournaments, oh my God, it was nail biting. It was so difficult to get my mom to sign those paperwork to allow me to participate. Yeah. It just was so difficult because her upbringing was a little bit different in Haiti to where they didn't understand the idea of certain people staying after school. Everybody have different upbringing, but hers unfortunately was very, very old fashioned. So it was very hard for me. Sometimes I used to have to lie to her and sneak out the house just to go to practice. Mm. Most of your um, classmates were Hispanic uh, in, in Hispanic, school yeah. and then at home, it was Haitian culture. Yeah, so it was Haitian culture. So how, how, how was it at, at, at home um, and compared to, I spent, to school? I spent a lot of time feeling um, somewhat secluded in a sense to where like my fellow classmates, they were able to get their parents to come to practice, you know, watch them um, practice and go out of town with them, uh, serve the chaperones. I didn't get that. And so at times I couldn't even participate in tournaments. So I kind of felt like uh, I felt different mm -hmm. and I felt like I didn't get the support that I needed from home. So for a long time, my mom and I were like very tough with one another to mm -hmm. where I was rebellious um, towards her because I felt like she wasn't supporting me sports wise. I mean, she fed me and that's what she kept saying. If I give you food and I give you clothing and you have a place to sleep, that's enough. So yeah. I was very yeah. rebellious towards my mom regarding that. It, 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 it just wasn't an easy, easy Absolutely. time for me. After the commercial break, I wanted to know what changed your mind, your perspective uh, about your parents, about the Haitian culture, and now you're being part of the Haitian community on radio. Stay with us, Nella. You're watching MDC in the Haitian community. My name is James Pierre. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Be creative, be a hero, be the solution, be connected, be innovative, be global, be successful, be you, be MDC, be Miami-Dade College. Welcome back to MDC in the Haitian community. I'm James Pierre. Wonderful conversation with Nelda Jean. Nelda, uh, you were telling me about high school. How was it with you, with your parents? And then now you moved on, uh, um, obviously. So what has changed in, in the relationship with your parents and also in regards of other communities as well, the Hispanic community? The relationship that I had with my mom, with my parents growing up, have a major impact on some of my decisions today. Mm -hmm. um, as a young woman growing up and not having the support that I needed from my mom and um, my, my parents all together because at the time my mom and my dad were divorced, mm -hmm. so it was my mom and my stepdad. And um, the difficulties that I encountered dealing with them, getting them to give me the support that I needed to do things that I felt was going to help me as an adult. Because I encountered so much difficulties from them, that's one of the reasons why today I decided to work in my community, particularly with young women and with women, to be able to be one of those people that can go to them and say, if you need help, if you need support, as a woman or as a young woman, you're going to get that support. You have that support and you have people, your peers, that are willing to help you and work with you to open doors for you. I felt that a lot of doors were not open for people of my culture that are women. And I believe that my mom was one of those people and because during her time, she didn't receive a lot of the support maybe that she probably felt she could have had. So growing up and raising me, she treated me as if 
this is a man's world. And as a young woman, my place is to go to school, come home, go in the kitchen, cook and clean, do my homework, and go to bed. And yeah. I feel that time has changed, and we have to change with time. So that helped me to feel and to focus in an area to where I want to be a woman that's going to be there for other women and young women and say, listen, you don't have to feel that this is not your world, this is not your place, and you don't belong here. We all belong, and we all have to take a stand. Yeah. And I have to say thank you for your service in the Haitian community thank as you. well, you empowering the community. But what, what sparked it and say, you know what, I want to do a radio show. I, I want to uh, communicate with my uh, Haitian community via radio. Well, you know how I said earlier, um, I grew up listening to Hans Van Ol, mm -hmm. Ed Lozama, and of course, Pima Book. And I was having a conversation with someone, and I said, um, I can name so many male that are in telecommunications, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's television or radio, but I couldn't name too many women. I mean, there were a couple, but the list went on when it came to male that are in this particular industry, this particular genre, and there were not too many women, especially women producers, Haitian women producers. Mm -hmm. And then and I said, uh, my first background in education is psychology, and my second is film at University oh, of okay. Full mm -hmm. So, and I said, you know what? I didn't want to be one of those people that just have all this knowledge and experience that I know I possess and sit back and not do anything about making a difference for my Haitian women. I didn't necessarily want to be in front of the camera or on the mic per se, but I wanted to be behind the scene. I wanted to be in the background and try to help with Haitian women and produce and create more avenues for other women to be able to be the one driving things to where they're producing radio shows and they're producing TV shows because there's not many of us and, yeah. and I wanted to change that. Sure. Hey, tell me now about your radio show and uh, what are the topics you, you're discussing throughout well, the show? Well, the radio show that I'm currently producing right now, um, Solid, mm -hmm. and the reason why we call it Solid is because it consists of four women. The purpose of that particular show is these four women have different professionalisms. And what happened is I learned that a lot of these different people, Haitian women particularly, that are um, specialists in different areas, we don't know about them. We don't know they're there. And sometimes they want to use their background and their education to educate the community. For example, I have one of them, her name is Shirley, and she's a professor. She's a college professor mm -hmm. in IT department. And she wanted to be able to educate other young women to take part in that particular field. And she felt that it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. But to find a way to reach out to young women in the Haitian community to allow them the ability to be educative and informative to the rest of the Haitian female community. She didn't know how to go about doing it. And so she and I spoke and she says, how can I reach out to my other female Haitian women? And then that's when I started producing radio station. It was actually Shirley that brought the idea to me and then I ran with it. Wow. And uh, solid, solid and creole is, mm -hmm. is a very strong word. It means that <laughs> everything is solid, like we said in English, right? Everything is, is strong. So yeah. that, you know, where that name came from? It, it represents the women that are consist of, um, that the show is comprised of. For example, mm -hmm. one of the women in the show is an attorney and she's a president of the Haitian Lawyers Association. Another one is an author, she's a poet, and mm -hmm. she's also a medical administrator. And we have another one who works in politics, um, Nancy, Nancy mm -hmm. Dominic, she's in politics. She works with Jean Monestine's office, who is the chairman for Dade County. And we have another one who's a PR, and she works with the American market. So because these women are very professional, they're very strong and very efficient in what they do, they represent what our culture consists of. And sometimes we need to portray, we need to give exposure to all these great people in our communities. And again, I keep going back to saying women, because I find that, yes, the men who paved the ways for a lot mm -hmm. of us, they have gotten a lot of exposures and a, a, a lot of publicities. But these strong, professional, and educated women that also have a voice and that are making a difference in our communities, they're not really getting the publicity and the exposure um, 
that are necessary or that is, you know, earned to them because they work hard in, in, in order for them to be able to earn all the work that they're doing. So I call the show Solid to represent these solid women in the professions and the work that they're doing in the communities. Okay. So obviously as a, as a minority mm -hmm. uh, in the Haitian community, as a producer uh, right now, how do you feel your, your presence in the Haitian community, especially in the radio field? I'm very excited right now because Solid, the current show that we have right now, is my third show um, that I have produced. And I thank the people of 1580 IT and 10 Please for opening more doors and more opportunities for me. And the fact that I'm working hard enough to make a difference among my Haitian uh, women and minorities as a whole, women in general, um, I'm very excited at the fact that one day at a time, people are taking notice to the fact that we do have women out here that are working hard and that are trying their best to make a difference. Yeah. And the fact that I was introduced to you via telephone and yeah. we were able to get you on the show and, 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 you know, to speak with us briefly. And now I'm here. So it's just a way to show you it may not happen overnight, but, you know, slowly but surely, women that are doing great work in the communities, it's going to be noticed eventually. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have to say uh, the show has a tremendous impact on the Haitian Thank community, you. especially uh, women uh, category. So please keep up the good work. We're going to take another break. When we come back, I need to know much more because you have several hats in that <laughs> Haitian community. Stay Thank with you. us now. Okay. You're watching MDC in the Haitian community. My name is James Fiel. We're going to take our last break. When we come back, much more to know about Nail Fashion. Be creative, be a hero, be the solution, be connected, be innovative, be global, be successful, be you, be MDC, be Miami-Dade College. Welcome back to our last segment. Our guest is uh, Nel Dajon, of course, with MDC in the Haitian community. I am James Pierre. Nel, that we spoke uh, briefly about all the things that you are doing in the Haitian community, but you have several hats, like I said. <laughs> you know, you're a producer, editor, uh, sometimes you direct and you have your production uh, uh, studios. So what is it you are doing through uh, telecommunication inside of the Haitian community? Well, right now, in addition to producing um, the radio shows, I'm also working with TV, for example, yesterday, one of our productions was filming the radio show Solid. Wow. Uh, I work with Sync to Sync TV, which uh -huh. airs on Island TV with Ed um, Noel, mm -hmm. uh, great guy. He's very good at what he does. He's been doing Sync to Sync TV for five years now that airs mm -hmm. on Island TV. And uh, he brought me on board recently as one of the co-producers for Sing to Sing TV. So I'm very excited about that. And the radio show, Solid, we started um, airing, we, we're going to start airing that on TV as well. So as of yesterday, we started shooting, filming uh, Solid on Wednesdays. That's going to be aired on Island TV as well. And uh, I, I originally started not on radio. I started with producing and directing movies. Um, oh, really? You may have had the information I sent you. One uh -huh. of the first movies I directed was Disturbed. Mm -hmm. And Creole is called Dishonet. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> it's a psychological thriller. Uh, I worked on When Desire as a screenplay writer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I recently um, worked with a film called Dupsis. So okay. with uh, Perry Casale and Creole Wa. And from there, I started producing uh, radio shows. But my background was primarily because I went to school for film, was in film, television and film, wow. motion w pictures. Wow, that's, that's great. That's great to know. <laughs> um, how do you see, I mean, from a Haitian-American perspective, I mean, you, you grew up here in Leno, Haiti. You've seen the Haitian community. Now you're being part of the Haitian community uh, as an executive producer, director. You are doing so much. How do you see the Haitian community now? What I see right now is 
absolutely wonderful. I see a lot of changes and I see so many different people from different corners, different angles, doing so many great things. For example, I know today we've talked a lot about the morning drive. Uh -huh. And I was telling Rebecca, sometimes in the morning when I wake up and I'm listening to that show, I have one eyes closed and one, one eyes open. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so excited about the fact that I noticed our young generation are doing so much today and they're motivated and they're positive. So I'm really happy with the changes that I'm seeing now and the directions in which our young people are going. And we have people like you and, and also Ed Lozama that are very good at kind of like not necessarily holding their hands, but that are mm. opening themselves up to where if one of these young people would go to them and say, hey, I, I need your help or I need this or I need directions. These guys who have been there from generations and generations are leaving the doors open to these young and new people that are coming today and, and mentoring them. I really love the directions in which the culture is going right now. Nicely said. How, how do you, is there any current project you are working on right now and, and, and from the radio perspective or also from other productions that you are doing? Stage, one of the stage um, production that I recently started working on three months ago is something called Le Roast. Uh, it's, an, uh, it's an adaptation of the American culture, a roast. I don't know if you're familiar with mm -hmm. what is called a roast. I adapted that and we did the research and we talked to some people and received permission. So we have something called Le Roast now that we're doing where we honor and, and toast to somebody that is doing great work in the community to where the last two we did was for a business owner in the community that owns a restaurant uh, for years mm -hmm. in the culture. We did another one where there's a gentleman in our music industry, um, Alex Timmy, and then the next one, which is scheduled for November 29th, is also someone that you guys mentioned here several times today, Marlene Bastien, mm -hmm. where we're gonna be doing a roast for her on the 29th of November. So that's one of the stage production that we started doing and the culture is really accepting the way in which we're presenting this the wow. roast. Wow, so obviously you are part of so many, <laughs> so many events in the Haitian community, you know, honoring uh, uh, the pioneers in the Haitian community, uh, it. doing so many great things in, in, in that community. So how do, you, how do you feel the giving back uh, attitude should be uh, adapted in, you know, instead of the young generation to come in and giving back to the community and also people like you to come in and say, you know what, I want to I, I wanna put my hand like we said in Korea, but meet him in a patla uh -huh. in order to have my community moving forward. <laughs> well, I didn't start in my Haitian culture. Um, I started with the Jamaican market where when I went to school and I was a dancer. I've been, mm -hmm. in addition to track and field, I enjoyed dancing. So I went to modern, uh, I did modern dance. And growing up, this girl that I met, her name is Angie, she's Jamaican. She's cousin to a Jamaican artist, um, Shaggy, and I was a backup dancer for Shaggy. So I started in the, in the Jamaican market, and it was from there, and I see how they motivate their, their culture, they motivate their people, and they have that togetherness. Like a lot of other cultures have togetherness, they have teamwork. And I've always felt my culture did not, did not necessarily have that teamwork thing going on. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to kind of like, you know, gear my attention a little bit more towards my culture, I wanted to be around people that, that are positive, such as yourself and, um, and hands, and, um, and focus more on working with people that knows the true meaning of teamwork. And, and so right now with the work that I'm doing in my culture, I'm enjoying and I'm appreciating for people like yourselves that are allowing us to be able to put our heads together and, and make great production together. I have to say we are so proud of you, of your accomplishment in the Haitian community. Thank Please you. keep up the good work, Nelda, and keep, uh, keep empowering uh, other uh, Haitian American women in order for them to be uh, successful. What is an advice in closing would you have uh, for uh, Haitian American, not only women, Haitian American coming from Haiti to the United States, what is it they have, you know, what is it they have to do in order to be successful, in order to follow the great path like you do? Well, first of all, one must always remain focused. Um, sometimes 
we get so distracted with so many things happening in our lives that we mm -hmm. lose focus. Uh, if there's ever a time, a moment which you can find a way to kind of like veer back and, and find your focus again, keep that focus. And most importantly, it's, it's, it's always great, I think, to laugh more and focus more on the positivity and worry less. And, and, and sharing. Um, I find that education is such a weapon that it can, it can make a huge difference. Education can change the world. So I think if you, if you know what you're doing and you have your focus in place, and of course, um, sharing is caring, I think it makes a whole lot of difference. Nice to say. Now, Vajan, thank you so much for being on our thank show you. today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for and thank me. you to you as well for watching MDC in the Haitian community. My name is James Pierre. We'll see you next time.